hi guys welcome to my channel my name is lilian uja if you're seeing this face for the first time thank you for stopping by to watch my channel i hope that you get something valuable today so today i want to talk about the proposed changes for work permits for international students i'm going to be giving you information about so many things that could likely affect international students in the coming you know months or years as the case may be you know so if you are an international student or you intend to become an international student in canada then you want to watch this video or send this video to anyone you know who is planning to come to canada through the student routes i wanted to understand that canada's government is proposing changes to you know the postgraduate work permits that could affect international students in the coming months or years. I'm going to be discussing a few topics in this video today, okay? And I'm going to be giving it to you. The first thing I want to talk about today is the program eligibility linked to labor shortages. The second one I want to talk about today is language requirements. The third one would be cap on international students. And the fourth one will be potential impact that could affect the routes to permanent residents. So you want to watch very attentively so you understand all this information. If you're seeing this video for the first time or you're just stumbling on my channel for the first time, please support my channel by clicking on the like button so that YouTube can show this video to more people who might need this opportunity. You never know. Now, moving on with the video, let's talk about my first point. But because soon as the government will be tying labor shortages to education needs, it means that if you don't graduate from a program that is linked to the labor shortage in your province, you might find it difficult to transition to a permanent president at the end of the day. So therefore, what it means is if you want to qualify for a postgraduate work permit, which is what you get after schooling here in Canada, then you should make sure that what the course you are graduating from is a course related to the labor needs in your province province. All of this actually is just to match student education with genuine labor needs in each province. Now the second point we have today is language and labor market integration. Now, new language requirements might be introduced to ensure that international students can fully integrate into the Canadian workforce. Now, this change actually is to ensure that international students have the right skills to be able to integrate in the professional workforce in Canada. Now, you know, what the government is trying to say is that you want to be, they want to be sure that when you eventually transition and become you know full-fledged in the work labor market or in the workforce of canada you are able to integrate fully you're able to cope you know with the with the language requirement because some some provinces are you know they are bilingual some are not you know so they want to be sure that whatever province you are coming into you have the required language you know you have the required language or you know the language that is prevalent in that province so all of this is just to make sure that everything is balanced i know and the economy is doing well now moving on to my third point today is managing international student goods we all know that the, there's an increase in the amount of students that are applying or people applying to come into school in canada a lot of people are applying to come in through the school route and to mitigate the you know overgrowth of this route the government is proposing a change so therefore with an increasing number of international students applying for, for for study permits the immigration minister has proposed a temporary cap on the number of study permits that will be allowed per time now this particular measure is actually introduced or going to be introduced to ensure that you know the right amount of study permits are taken that aligns with the economic needs of each province per time what this also means is that if you want to come to canada through the route of, of study you want to be doing things fast. A lot of people procrastinate on things like this. If you know that you want to come to school, I remember when we wanted to come into Canada, you know, a lot of people were saying, I'm not interested. I'm... So many of them who said they were not interested are now interested, but things are a bit stiffer. If you know you want something, it's something you, are, you think you can do, you do it at the time it's hot. You don't delay, you don't procrastinate on things you should do. If you need to do an ECA, which is your educational credential assessment, getting your 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 transcripts from your school of study, all of those things that you need to do, verifying your words, all of those things, you need to start doing them. You don't waste time because things change. The minute you are wasting time, months, time is going, months are going by, or years going by, years are going by, and the rules, the change the rules are changed every now and then, and it becomes stiffer. These days, we notice that it is stiffer for people to, you know, come into Canada through the student routes, or even the permanent resident routes. Things are changing on a daily basis because people are coming into Canada a lot, and the resources that are here are not almost enough 
to cater for the people who are coming. So they want to be sure that everything they are doing, you know, allowing people to come is able to match with the resources that are available here in Canada. So if it's something you want to do, go and do it now, right now. Do not waste time. Now, lastly, guys, let's talk about enhancing the route to permanent residence. Now, this is the most critical part of my topic today. The whole essence of people coming to Canada is not really because they want to just leave their country. It's because they want to come. Most people are coming to study because they want to gain permanent, they want to become citizens. That's the whole idea. They want to have this dual citizenship status. You know, people that are coming through permanent residence straight up, straight up yes, because they have the opportunity. But the end goal of everyone who comes here at the end of the day is to become a permanent resident, right? So this is the most critical. And if you're not doing things the right way, if you're not following the trends, if you're not following the news, you will miss out on what you should be doing now the proposed changes that the government is about to make might also influence you know the pathway for permanent residents especially for students if you are not like i said earlier going or taking a course that is in demand a course that is in in demand in your province it might eventually affect your your opportunity to remain here as a permanent worker what do i mean by this if in your province where your school is because most times people get nominated or become permanent resident because they schooled in a particular province or because they get a job offer in a particular province in a demand sector so if you have taken a course that is not in the demand sector that could affect your chances of becoming a permanent resident in that province or if your course of study is not relevant actually to whatever is happening in that, you know, it might streamline your opportunity because things are getting stiffer. You want to be sure that the course you are taking is, is relevant. You want to ask questions. Don't just because you want to come to Canada, take any course, take whatever you see. Do your research about the courses or the in-demand sectors in the province you are going to and find out if the course you are taking is linked or closely at, um, linked to the in-demand jobs in that province. So that could help you to you know secure your stay as a permanent resident after you are done with your school. You know because after you are done with school, you are given or you are to apply for a postgraduate work permit. The postgraduate work permit allows you to stay in Canada for two to three years, depending on the year on the number of years of your course. So if you did a one year course, you get a one year postgraduate work permit. If you did a two year course, you get a two to three years postgraduate work permit. So it depends on the number of years you had the course for. So when you get a postgraduate work permit, you are allowed to stay here in Canada and look for a job. Okay, while you are working, you now have to apply for your permanent residence within that one year or two to three years that you have. Okay, now what I'm not saying is that if your job offer is not an in-demand sector, you might not be qualified to get permanent residence, or if the course of study you chose is not linked to the in-demand sectors or the demand in-demand jobs in that province, it might also streamline your opportunities to become a permanent resident. So you don't want to waste your money, your effort, your time, and all those things just to find out at the end of the day you did the wrong course. We've seen people who have come here and are taking the wrong courses or taking the wrong programs and have to do another course again, spending more money to just become and wasting a lot of years that they would have used to become permanent residents, you know all of those things you don't want those things to be your issue okay and that's why you're watching this video today now i want you to understand that the government is not being mean by introducing all of these policies all of these adjustments is their strategic approach to make sure that there is a balance between international education and the economic and labor you know needs of the country they want to be sure that they are not affected they are not bringing in people too many people and weighing their economy down at the end of the day they want to make sure that there's no mismatch that everything is balanced everything is fine okay so I wanted to do your planning. Everything about immigration is about planning. You know, you don't rush to do immigration. You think about it, you pray about it, you plan very well, you ask questions, you watch videos. All of these things will help you guide your thoughts and so that you don't make the wrong decision. Thank you so much for stopping by to watch my video. I always bring videos like this on them weekly or by weekly basis just to help you your immigration plans you know to decide if this is your choice of country thank you for watching my video and i'll see you on the very next one be good